In this video, I will talk about effective value or root mean square or RMS value. See, if we have a DC current, the DC current will maintain a constant current throughout a circuit with respect to time. Therefore, I will get a straight line of current which will be in parallel with the time axis when I will have an alternating current like this let's say I am talking about this sinusoidal alternating current see our alternating current will change its magnitude from time to time and it will go through positive half cycle and it will go through negative half cycle what I want to say is that our alternating current will change its magnitude from time to time and it will change its direction at a regular interval now let's say I have a circuit here this circuit contains a resistor of 1 kilo ohm and contains an alternating voltage source whose amplitude is equal to 12 volt now if I show you the current waveform you will see uh, it will produce an alternating current that is flowing through this 1 kilo ohm resistor now see from this point to this point our alternating current will go through positive half cycle and it can hold any value between 0 to let's say 12.5 milliampere and from this point to this point our alternating current is going through negative half cycle and it can hold any value between 0 to minus 12 milliampere during negative half cycle now see if i want to calculate the average value of the sinusoidal waveform or sinusoidal current i average will be equal to zero over full cycle because the area covered by the positive half cycle and the area covered by the negative half cycle will be equal which will result the average current i average equal to zero although the average value of current in this circuit equal to zero here you will see if I supply the alternating voltage source in this circuit, I will get continuous current flow in this circuit. At a time, it will be flowing in this clockwise direction. Another time, it will be flowing or the current will be flowing in anti-clockwise direction. What I want to say, as we get the continuous flow of current in this circuit, that indicates that in this circuit, the electrons will be in motion or the electrons will be moving all over the circuit at a time in clockwise and another time in anti-clockwise direction as the electrons are moving through this one kilo ohm resistor they will produce heat in this one kilo ohm resistor movement of electrons will produce heat in this resistor that means i can say that due to the current flow in the circuit i will get the power absorbed by the one kilo ohm resistor and that power will be equal to i square r small i square r because because this small i represents the alternating current now the question is that although the average value of this current is equal to zero how do we get the heat from the resistor or as the average value of current is equal to zero how do we get the power absorbed in this one kilo ohm resistor so i can say that there must be another standard to compare the dc and ac or alternating value or alternating waveform and that value is known as effective or RMS value root mean square value of an alternating quantity now I will talk about the concept of RMS value RMS value is measured in terms of heat production or heat generation or power absorption heat production that means heat will be I square RT or if I consider the power absorption that will be I square into R. I will talk about the concept of RMS value in terms of heat generation or power absorption in the later part of this video.
Now let's say I have this sinusoidal current. It has positive and negative half cycle. The average value of this sinusoidal current will be I average and that value of current will be equal to zero. Now the question is what makes the average value of this current equal to zero? Because the area covered by the positive half cycle will be exactly equal to the area covered by the negative half cycle. Therefore, the positive area will get cancelled by the negative areas. As a result, the I average will be equal to zero. Now, what will happen if I take the square of this current? I A C square. If I take the square of this current, I will get see this I equal to I M sin omega t. Therefore, I will get I A C square equal to I M square sin square omega t. Now see, sorry, this will be sine omega t. During zero to phi interval or during the positive half cycle, you will see I will get positive values of the alternating current. Now look at the phi to twice phi interval. Here you will see from phi to twice phi interval, I will also get the positive instantaneous values. That means during both the positive and negative half cycles, if I square the alternating current, I will get the positive values only. Therefore, our we will get a non-zero answer or the non-zero value of current because the positive area or the area covered by the positive half cycle will not get cancelled by the negative half cycle. Now I will show you that to determine the RMS value of an alternating waveform, we have to perform three mathematical operation. Okay. At first we have to take the square of the given waveform. That means at first we have to take the square of the alternating waveform of which we are determining the RMS value. Let's say I have this alternating waveform I A C equal to I M sin omega t. So if I want to determine the RMS value of this waveform, I will simply take the square of this I A C. If I take the square of this I A C, I will get I M square sin square omega t. Now you will see during positive half cycle, I will get the positive value and during negative half cycle I will also get the positive value therefore I will get the unidirectional current and this I A C square is known as E squared waveform of alternating current. In the second step, I will take the average value of this e squared waveform and we take the average value of any waveform by divide the area of that waveform with the period t of that waveform. Now see I have to determine the average value of the e squared waveform. Therefore mean or the average of the e squared waveform will be equal to area of the e squared waveform over full cycle divided by the period of the cycle of the e squared waveform. So if I take these two ratio I will get average value of the squared waveform. See this will be our squared waveform which I have obtained from the step number one. Now if I want to calculate the average value of this squared waveform that means average value of I squared AC. I will take the area of the squared waveform over full cycle. See here in case of this waveform area over full cycle will be period of the full cycle will be phi and area covered by the full cycle will be this area okay so i will integrate this i square ac within 0 to phi interval integration of 0 to phi i square ac see in the x-axis i am taking omega t so i will integrate it with respect to omega t and divide that with the period of the squared waveform here period of the squared waveform will be phi 
now the value of i square is equal to im square sin square omega t so if i put the value of i square is here i will get integration of 0 to phi i m square sin square omega t d omega t divided by phi and this is the average value of the squared waveform which i have obtained by dividing the area of the squared waveform over full cycle by the period of the cycle of the squared waveform so far i have done the square of the alternating quantity after that i take the average or mean of that squared waveform now i will take the root of the average value of the squared waveform therefore i will get the root mean square or rms value Th in step number three we take the square root of the mean or the average of the squared waveform and that is the root r of the mean m of the square s or rms value of the ac signal therefore we will calculate the rms value of any alternating quantity by using this formula root over area of the squared waveform over full cycle divided by the base length or period of the cycle of the squared wave shape or waveform now see from step number two i get the average value of i square ac equal to integration of 0 to phi i square ac d omega t by phi now if i take the root over of this average value of i square ac i will get the rms value i rms so our i rms will be equal to root over integration of phi i ac square d omega t divided by phi now let me discuss the rms value in terms of heat generation rms value of an alternating quantity represents that value of alternating quantity which produces the same amount of heat as dc the condition is that the heat generated by the dc source must be equal to the heat generated by the ac source and the value of AC current which will make these two heats equal will be our RMS current let's say I have a resistor here R I am supplying this resistor with this DC voltage source V let's say the current I is flowing for the time T through this resistor therefore the heat generated by the DC source in this R resistor will be equal to i square r t now let's say i am supplying that same resistor with this alternating voltage source as a result i will get alternating current i in this circuit let's say the alternating current is flowing in the circuit for the time t therefore heat generated by the ac source will be equal to i square r t now what will be the rms value of this alternating current i the value of alternating current that will produce a heat equal to the i dc square r t will be the rms value that means the value of alternating current that will produce the i dc square r t amount of heat due to this alternating source that value of alternating current will be known as rms current okay that's it thank you